morning. Good morning, everyone. How are you doing on this beautiful day? It's a little rainy outside, but we needed the rain, right? I know everybody's grass is turning brown. Um, if you don't mind, let's go ahead and stand up. Um, I'd like to take just a few seconds this morning to explain a couple of the songs we're singing. You know how I like to do that sometimes. And uh, Pastor Morris has been preaching on strange things. So uh, a couple of these songs that we're doing this morning, it really wasn't planned this way, but it works out. Um, come from Ezekiel chapter 37, and if you're familiar with the story, there's an old cathedral song, and I think the Oak Ridge Boys might have redone it, but it talks about the Valley of Dry Bones. And uh, the prophet Ezekiel was in a pretty low spot, the, the, the nation of Israel was in trouble, and God sent him to a Valley of Dry Bones, a graveyard, and God tells him to speak over the bones, and the bones will come to life, and they'll fight, and the army will be resurrected, and as he did it, um, it happened, uh, you know, sinew and muscle and tendons began to form, and this army of bones comes to life and fights the battle for the Lord. So when we sing these next couple of songs, you could be thinking about how God can do anything. We can have victory in him, amen. Should be familiar with this one, we've done it before.
saying before God's a God of miracles and if he could bring bones back to life just think what he can do for us Thank you, Uncle Chris, for singing with me this morning. Good morning, everybody. I hope we are all doing well today. It's nice to see you again. I will be back here this week and next week, so you get stuck with me. Um, so I will actually now be singing my new song that will be releasing July, June 19th, so you guys get a little preview. <laughs> In my eyes, I see. 
Katie. All right, Christ Kids, off, off and running. Well, good morning. Glad to see you here on this second Sunday of June, and glad that you are with us and uh, able to come out and celebrate Sunday morning with us. Uh, we're going to go into a time of prayer, and I wanted to mention about Katie's song. That song is an original, so nobody, it's never been released to radio, and uh, Missouri Station, if you uh, Look up C106 in Cape Girardeau, Missouri. It is the number one gospel show in the five-state region. And for the last three weeks, they have played her every morning on that program, haven't they? Yeah. So good for you, Katie. So go check out Rick Jones on C106 in Cape Girardeau. It's KZKW, I believe, is the call letters. But anyway, uh, you can stream them live. And most likely every Sunday morning, you will hear Katie uh, up until this little bit of, uh, well, it gets released in a few weeks and then you'll hear all over the place so but we want to pray this morning i tell you um as we've been getting a lot of pra praise reports and things in i see alan with us today and and we've just got so, uh, so many things to be thankful for penny it goes back to when we started the church in uh, 2010 and just as we went into the new building and we kind of had our dedication of the building like i don't know seven or eight months after we bought the building 
Uh, there was a song that was real popular out of the time, uh, something about amazing happens here or something, and we sort of cabbaged onto that as our, as our brand, if you will, or as our theme or whatever you want to call our logo, I suppose, and, and we used it, and then, you know, I like everything, kind of things change a little bit, and you don't promote that as much because then you, you start setting out what we have now about, you know, helping people love God and love others and our four Ds of discipleship and things, but still the, under, uh, the undertow is that amazing things happen here at Christ Church, and it should happen in every church and I know it does in many I know it doesn't in many because <laughs> I travel in churches fact of the matter I heard a pastor this week that I listened to some and he had just went to some church and he went back to his church he said I'll never go back to that church again he said if I do if I go back to that city I'm gonna preach in a barn or some street corner because he said those people don't believe God for nothing he said they think God's out to get them and he said I'll never go back and preach there so that's pretty harsh but anyway but it's true so I just want to share with you some praise reports that we have and then we're gonna pray first of all Roger Harris should be coming out of surgery right about now uh, most of you got the prayer request on Friday they did go in and they did a procedure uh, to take a stone out of a bile duct and they were going to take the go ahead and do his remove his gallbladder but his blood pressure spiked a little bit so they wanted to give him a few days and this morning Sandy told me that he went in about eight o'clock and it's going to take a couple hours so he should be coming out and in recovery so we're going to pray for Roger Alan is with us uh, his latest report he's got five more weeks of chemo and radiation to go but the doctor has told him good news that's the amazing things that the mass in his lungs is shrinking and as, as Christy said we're going to keep the prayers going Alan amen so, uh, and then also Mary uh, Holcroft, she's going to be going in for an infusion once every six weeks and then reevaluate with some more scans. And she sees her PA on the 16th of this month. And then they're going to start treatments. And so we're believing that she's just going to continue to do as well as she has been. Miss Pat Robinette is with us back from her recovery. So there's another amazing thing. Some of you had never seen Pat because you started coming since she'd been out with her surgery and recovery. And there she is. Penny had her surgery. She's with us this week, and there she is right after surgery on Tuesday. I tell you, we're like a bounce-back church. You know, we have surgery, and we're, I'm coming back. Remember when I had that first hip surgery, and I showed up that Sunday afterward? I ain't doing that again. I would never do that. That was ridiculous. But anyway, you know, I thought, well, I'm not going to, you know, nothing going to get me down. But second surgery, I stayed at home. Um, Let's see here. Uh, also, so here's I want to give you the, oh, so Mimi, somebody was asking about Mimi this morning. She does our check-in. Mimi actually just caught a flight to go do some teaching in her medical field that she's in. She, she just texted me. She's on her flight headed to Florida. But last week, she was back there working, doing her station, and she told me she'd be praying for Mimi. I kind of hurt my foot a little bit, and I said, I will be. Well, then later that afternoon, I got this text. She said, I went to the clinic today after church because I fell thought I twisted my ankle ankle well I guess I broke it she says I'm in a boot and crutches and I have to go see an orthopedic doc this week that was the past week I leave for business trip this coming Sunday which was today to teach all the next week in front of people so we were praying with her standing with her believing with her for no surgery so today she texts me as she was on the airplane no surgery she said no surgery whatsoever she said, no surgery, praise God. I'm in a boot for a couple of weeks. Then the ortho doc said maybe a brace for several months, said it could take up to a year. But she said, and here's what we're going to believe with her for. I'm believing for a supernatural speedy recovery because she's a runner. She said, so I can run and work out much sooner than that. And I assured her that we were going to be agreeing with that as well. We already got no more surgery, so why not get out of the boot, right? Alicia, we continue to stand with Alicia, and God's doing a great thing in her life and her body, and we keep getting good reports, and we continue to stand with Alicia and Ian and Reagan, uh, Mess Pat Oliver as well for her numbers just to continue to do what they do. Now, the last one I want to share with you before we pray is, now, uh, Miss Roberta and her family's not here today, but I want to share with you uh, Miss Roberta Laris and I met them back a, a few months ago when I did her husband's homegoing service, and they started coming right around Christmas time. If you remember, she asked us, and, and I looked it up, April 28th, she sent me the message about her great-grandson and her daughter Leslie's grand, grandson, Quinn, six years old, started having pain, trouble walking, told he had leukemia, and he had been getting a port and receiving chemo. Well, we've been keeping you up to date on how he goes, he gets the treatments and all, but now they were concerned about the walking because it looks like all the leukemia is, is things are like dis, dis, dissipating from his body. She sent me this last night. Quinn has been in therapy to help him walk again. He has a walker now. Thanks for all the prayers. God is good. Amen. 
Isn't that wonderful? So we're going to pray right now. And, uh, this, and if you have a need in your heart, in your life, I'm going to just encourage you to lift that up to the Lord. Uh, and, you know, because God's no respecter of persons. We're talking about strange things. And I'll tell you, God wants to do strange things in your life. Strange just means out of the ordinary. That's all strange means. Just out of the uh, norm of things. That's just what strange means. Uh, yesterday we saw some people at an event we went to and they said they probably wouldn't be here because of their event but they said uh, they were inviting some of their family who was at the event to come to our church they said you really need to come to this guy's church she said yeah we've been there for ever how many months she said and she said I'll tell you she said you ain't ever seen nothing like it she said <laughs> I'm like, no, that, you got that right. And so she said, no, I mean that in a good way. She said, I've been to a lot of churches. She said, you just never seen anything like this church. So, but you know what? That's all right. It's okay to be, you know, people are strange. Da, 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 da. Okay, so anyway. But, but you know what God said in 1 Peter? He said that we are to be a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a what? A peculiar people, a, a people that's different, that you see something different. So if you have a need in your heart today, it could be a physical need as we've prayed a lot for. It could be for decisions that maybe you're going through. A, maybe you're at a crossroads in life, or maybe your career, maybe your education, maybe a life decision, whatever the case might be. It could be a financial decision. I mean, there's just different things that, that come across our path. So as we pray, the Bible says, let your request be made known unto God, and he'll hear that prayer. So as we give God thanksgiving for what he's done, let's also thank him for what he's going to do. Amen? Father, today we are so thankful for the people that are here. And we are so thankful, God, for these prayer requests. And, Lord, every week it just seems like uh, the, the text line that people text or our emails just get, uh, or even the answering, the reception, as she gets more and more calls about uh, these good things that you're doing in the hearts and lives of people. And, Father, for that we are so thankful. And we know where it comes from. James 1.17 said, Every good gift and every perfect gift comes down from the Father in heaven. Jesus said, if you then, being evil or being natural, know how to do good things for your children, how much more will my heavenly Father do for those who ask? So, Lord, here at Christ Church, we just take those scriptures at face value. We just take them to say, you said what you meant, and you meant what you said, and so we take it that way. So we believe for good and perfect gifts. We believe, Father God, that the good things that we would do for our children, you do even more than that in our life. And we've seen that in Miss Pat Robinette's life. We see that in Miss Pat Oliver's life. We see that in Alan's life today, Father, in Penny's life, in Alicia's life, in Quinn in Mimi and all of these God that you're doing a great work in their life and Lord we do lift up Roger to you we continue now uh, believing for a supernatural and a speedy uh, recovery I know he's just retired and he's got a list of things he's ready to do uh, and ready to enjoy and it's just like the enemy to try to throw a monkey wrench in it right here at the early stages and we we recognize what the enemy's trying to do is he would try to uh, Lord just slow him down but Lord thank you that we know that the that the devil's best is never enough against a child of God. Father, today we lift up our needs to you as we look across this congregation, those watching online. Uh, Father, the, uh, the, the, the request, the ask, the petition is as varied as the group that we have here today and those that are watching online. Uh, we're all at different places in our faith walk, Father. Some of us are just starting. Some of us have been at it for a while. Some of us are restarting. We, we, we kind of uh, slowed down just a little bit, but we've decided we're going to gear up and we're going to get back in the race. We've, we've been on the bench long enough and we're ready to get back in and run with faith the race that has been set before us so lord we thank you god that you hear our prayers today lord we lift up these needs thank you for continued healing in alan's body lord thank you that and in mary's body lord that we're just going to continue to hear good reports as they successfully go through these treatments as well as quinn as he's uh, lord getting those legs and that strength back at six years old what a testimony He's going to be for you, Lord, as these others are, as you do a great thing in their life and in their body. Thank you, Lord, for what you've continued to do. Thank you for what you do here in our church, Lord, and now we give you glory. Also, Father, we bless uh, Katie's new uh, song as it goes out, Lord. It's not by accident that that songwriter from Ohio or the promoter from Texas talked to a songwriter in Ohio to get a song for a girl in Indiana who went to Nashville to record it, Father God. Lord, there might be seven degrees of separation 
generation or more there, but God, you are the one that brings it all together, and you bring it together for a purpose. So Lord, I thank you that every week, every day as these, that song is being played, people are going to be ministered to, people are going to be touched by your presence, and Lord, they're going to not only see their life in your eyes, but Lord, what you have in store for them. And so Father, now we just commit this time into your hands, and we give you glory in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Well, let me grab my Bible real quick. I left my Bible back here. Hold on. I have a backpack today because I'm leaving on a trip as soon as I leave here. Hold on. Here, I'll just bring my backpack out with me, and you can see my back. There you go. How you like that? All right. Just call me Dora. Backpack, backpack. So, all right. Uh, Derek, how are you doing? It's good to see you. Finally got a Sunday off, man. I'm glad to have you. I'll try to keep you awake. I'll do what I can. If, if you doze off, there's three seats beside you. Stretch out. Pretend like you're on like one of the Virgin Airlines flights, you know? <laughs> Just go to bed. I don't care. You know, Steve Ransom and I had that story. Uh, we talked about that the other day. I said, you know, I just assume people be in church and fall asleep as to stay at home and sleep, you know? Because, you know, studies prove that, uh, you know, Miss Jacobs, you've probably seen this. You know, people get in the, in the ear gate. It still happens. I've, I've sat right where you've sat. And believe it or not, you know, as, as good as my pastor was, because I worked nights, um, I doze off, and I didn't mean to. It wasn't disrespectful. I was just tired. I'd been up all night working, but you know, yet I would still hear what he was saying, and and sometimes I'd have dreams about what he was saying. It was interesting, you know. And then I'd wake up and realize, wait a minute, I'm in church. So, <laughs> but we are so glad that you're here, and we're glad that you're part of what God is doing at Christ Church. Well, you know, we have, as, as Chris said, we started the series last week. We're going to continue into it. But I want to start by just reminding you that, that the whole story of the Bible is, is one giant story of redemption. And I think that's what I want you to keep in mind anytime you read the Bible. When you run across a, a strange thing, be it Ezekiel and, the, and the, the, the man being thrown in on, on the bones and getting up and running off, you know, every story still points to God's plan of redemption. And the plan of redemption is simply this. God created the world in a perfect state. Man messed it up, because that's what happens when man gets involved. We mess things up without the guidance of the Holy Spirit, without the leading. When we don't listen to the leading of the Holy Spirit, when we don't allow God's word to be a lamp into our feet and a light into our path, we will mess things up no matter how good God wants it to be for us. But, but God, remember that. We're going to get on to that one day. But God will intervene on our behalf if we allow him to. And that's what the story of redemption is. Adam and Eve came along. They messed up the whole thing of creation uh, because they didn't do what God told them to do. They weren't listening to God. They were listening to a strange voice. But God immediately began to put a plan into action that he had already laid out from the foundation of the world, and that was to bring you and I and all of humanity who were willing back into relationship with him. And that's really, from Genesis to Revelation, every story. I don't care how weird the story, how strange the story, how boring the story is. You know, you get around Christmas time and you start reading the genealogies of Matthew. Or if you're reading the Bible through and you get into the book of Matthew, and this one begat this one, and this one begat that one, you think, man, there's a whole lot of begotten going on. You know what I mean? There's just a lot going on there. But there's a reason for that, because if you look, you'll see people like, Rahab the harlot in there. You remember Rahab the harlot? She knew Ahab the Arab, sheik of the burning sand. Now, only some of you of a certain age, Cindy's going to even know what that's all about right there. So that tells me you're a Ray Stevens fan right there. Talk about Ahab the Arab. All right. So within these stories, there are some, uh, there are some confusing stories. Oh, what's that about? You know, and even me. I mean, I've been a Christian since I was 16. I started preaching at 18 started pastoring at 19 i certainly don't know everything about the bible and there are still stories that i read and i'm like boy that is that's interesting you know I, I just wonder what that's really all about but there's some confusing stories there are some boring stories i'll be honest enough there's you know the begotten's and all of that the lineologies have you ever tried to lead, read leviticus about 11 o'clock at night before you go to bed well that's a sleeper if you need a good you know <laughs> You know, you got one You got one turtle dove, you got two turtle doves, you got three turtle doves. I'm like, am I reading Leviticus or Dr. Seuss here? I'm not sure what's going on. 
But I mean, you just read on, and, and some of the things are very, uh, can be very boring. But then there are some amazing stories in the Bible. There's some strange stories. I'm telling you, there's just some downright weird stories in the Bible. So um, I purposed in my heart a few weeks ago as I, uh, I kind of looked ahead, and that's part of what I'll do when I'm, when I'm on my little trip this week is, is kind of look ahead for what God has for us over the next few months to uh, round out this year at Christ Church. So I began to think about all these years. Like I said last week, that story I never preached on that I can think of. It would be 40 years this summer that I've been preaching. I've never preached on that particular account last week. Why? Well, it's just weird. I mean, you know, it's just you really got to have a thus saith the Lord to, to get something out of that. But I believe, we, I believe we found something last week. But what we do find, though, is all the stories hold purpose. And it goes back to what Paul wrote to Timothy in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16. All Scripture, the weird strange the confusing the boring the genealogy list all scripture is inspired means breathed by god has been dictated by god and it is beneficial for teaching for rebuke for correction and for training in righteousness it's all beneficial so that you and i the men and women of god we may be fully capable equipped for every good work so we know that's true so there's no saying if that is true we know that's true so since second timothy 3 is true that all scripture has been given by god and it is beneficial then even the weird stories the strange stories have something to help us out in life last week we looked at the account of the talking donkey Remember that? Some of you got to be here, some of you wasn't, and that's okay, but it's on the video if you want, or whatever that is back there, online if you want to watch it later. And, but even in that, that thing, that the story of the talking donkey, what we learned, and it's been a real help to me this week, just as a reminder, we learned that God is still using and will use anything or anyone to correct us, to confirm something in life, to connect us with something to comfort us or to simply show us that he cares so with those things in mind i want to take you to our strange story number two that we're going to cover in the book uh, uh, in the month of june go with me to the old testament book of second kings we're going to go to the sixth chapter of second kings chapter six i'm going to give you just a moment to find that there in case you haven't been to second kings in a while and we're going to see a very interesting story here out of 2 Kings. By the way, next week we're going to be back in 2 Kings because just for Father's Day, we're going to talk about bald men and bears. Just, just in time for Father's Day. So next Sunday it will be bald men and bears out of 2 Kings chapter 2. So if you want to get a little jump start on it, you can check that out. All right. But today we're going to talk about something different. 2 Kings chapter 6, verse 1. If you're there, say amen. If you're going... All right, again, I'm reading out of the CEV because that's just what I've been using this year, and I've enjoyed it, and I, I hope it helped you. But you read whatever version you want to read and whatever I think is on the screen, CEV. But you use the version that helps you. One day the prophet said to Elisha, the place where we meet with you is too small. Well, we kind of know how that is. Some Sundays it's a little cramped in here, isn't it? You know, we understand that. So it starts off with a practical need here. The place where we meet with you is too small. Why don't we build a new meeting place near the Jordan River? Each of us could get some wood, then we could build it. So they got kind of a nice little co-op plan going there. That's a good idea, Elisha replied. Let's get started. Aren't you going with us? One of the prophets asked. Yes, I'll go, Elisha answered, and he left with them. They went to the Jordan River and began chopping down trees. While one of the prophets was working... His axe head fell off and dropped into the water. Oh, he shouted, Sir, I borrowed this axe. Now, see, that was still in the day when, when you borrowed something, it was pretty important to get it back to folks. Amen. Uh, we don't quite, I won't preach on that today, but that doesn't really happen, you know, because you know what? They're still close enough to Deuteronomy where it says you should be a lender and not a borrower. And if you borrow, you need to get whatever it is you borrowed back. So he, his integrity is on the line. Think about this. His reputation. So he's a preacher. He's a, you know, and I'll, I want some of you to underline this so that you remember that, yes, preachers do work. Glory to God. Amen. 
one of the guys that I worked with at the funeral home, he said, I don't know what you're complaining about. You preachers only have to work about two hours on Sunday morning. I said, not me. Our service is only an hour and ten minutes long. <laughs> he said, and then what do you do? Go out and play golf? Well, I don't play golf. Angela's the golfer in the family. I don't play golf. So, you know, if ever people say, ah, preachers, they don't do nothing. Right here, there's a, there's a whole seminary, whole Bible school out there building their house. So don't be coming telling me that preachers don't work because he's preaching. So his reputation's on the line because, you know, he is a, he's a prophet. He's a minister. He's a pastor. I mean, it's like if something did get out in the, in, the, in the rumor mill about me as your pastor here. Well, if, it, if, it's, you know, if it's true and it's bad, well, that's not good. If it's untrue and it's bad, it's still not good. It doesn't help because you want to keep a good uh, reputation uh, and Peter uh, Paul talks about it in the New Testament have you know keeping a good reputation among those you serve so he's very concerned about this this is not like well ah, it's cheap anyway he can buy another one I mean you know it was just a different society than what we li maybe lived in today you know and he says oh sir I borrowed this axe now watch this verse 6 where did it fall in Elisha asked and the prophet pointed to the place, and Elisha cut a stick and threw it into the water at that spot. The axe head floated to the top of the water. Now, this is an, an iron axe head. This is not a iron head. Made, this is not an axe made out of cork. This is not a bobber axe head. This is not a paper mache axe head. This is an iron axe head, and it floated to the top of the water. Now get it, Elisha told him, and the prophet reached in and grabbed it. Wow, what a story. So all of a sudden you have two substances of this earthly realm, of elements of this earth. You got water and you got iron, two that don't really go together because if you were playing, you know, rock, paper, and scissors, well, and you ended up with an iron axe head, you're going to get covered by water because that's just the way it is. But we're going to find some things about the character of God, the desire of God, and the ability of God as we go through this, and we're going to find a message that will help you in 2023 in Plainfield other than take back what you borrow. That's always a, a good one, but we'll, we'll deal with that later. We'll do a community of values like the police department one day, and we'll talk about take back what you, Nobody's borrowed nothing from me, don't get me wrong. You know, somebody's like, somebody's borrowed something from preacher, ain't brought it back. No, I'm not not poking the bear i'm just 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 talking okay but let's talk about this so here's what happens in a lot of churches today who do not grasp the amazing aspect of god they want to explain away the strange things they want to explain away the supernatural they want to somehow bring the supernatural into the realm of the natural well you can't do it no more than you could take the virgin birth and try to figure out how it happened other than a manifestation of God. No more than you could take how Jesus took five loaves and a few fish and he fed 5,000 plus on a hillside and then it wasn't long. He just repeated it and did it again because it was a needed thing. Well, but look, I looked up some things because it's not hard to, to, you know, look this stuff up on the internet because there's always some... So, there's always... Okay, I won't even get into that. All right, no, let's, let me leave that alone. Okay, so let, let's just talk about this. Let's come from the positive side. So you can call me, uh, you can call me an optimist. You can call me a possibility thinker. You can call me uh, a, a faith man. You can call me whatever. But I'm telling you, uh, God is more than able to do exceeding abundantly above we ask or think. But the problem is we don't see much of that because we're not asking it nor are we thinking it. See, when we get into the thinking that God can do the impossible, when we get into the asking of God can do the impossible, that's when we see the impossibility. I had one minister years ago, I heard him say this, and it really took root in my life. If you want to have a miracle lifestyle, if you want to see miracles happen in your life, you have to live a miracle lifestyle. Well, what does that mean? You have to believe miracles. You have to expect miracles. You have to know that miracles are for today. Miracles didn't end when somebody died. I mean, if nothing else, when Jesus died, miracles got, like, kicked into high gear all right well let me just share with you some of the how it gets kind of explained away and you know it's almost it's harder for me to believe this silliness than it is just simply to believe god's word that god was god and he did something spectacular one old boy said it like this bless his heart 
I would hate to be in his congregation. I'm just going to tell you guys, I'm so sorry. I, I don't know what I'd do. I don't know. I don't know. I don't have to worry about it. I'm not going to his church. But anyway, but listen to this. Here's what he said happened. See, what he's trying to do. He's trying to explain away God. He's trying to explain away the, the God. I could almost imagine, Betty, he taught like this. Elisha, he probably had this big Bible voice. Elisha poked around in the water uh, with a branch. Okay, let me read it the way so you can understand. Because now Derek will go to sleep if I start talking like that. Elisha, here's, here's how one old boy told his church. This is stupid. <laughs> Elisha poked around in the water with that branch that was cut down until he successfully inserted it into the axe head and lifted it to the worker's hands. <laughs> well, my swanee, as the old boy in Mississippi used to say, that don't, if, you, if you can get a branch and you can blindly poke around and get that branch in that iron axe head and pull that thing up with a branch and then hand it over without dropping it, me and you are going to the theater and we're going to play the crane game and I'm going to decorate Abby's bedroom with a whole bunch of stuffed animals. Now, Jace is good at that crane game. I'm no good at it, but that's how it's, you know, and that's where some people are. That's why, you know, when people like Miss Pat or Alan or Alicia or Quinn or others are at you know, again, not all churches, but certain churches that preach this kind of silliness. You know, it's kind of like the old boy told my buddy up there, that preacher told my buddy up at the Speedway. He said, preacher, if I had just got stabbed in the back and I had 30 seconds to live, what would you tell me? And I told him, I said, well, you better make sure you know Jesus. Well, how do I know that? Ask him in your heart. That's what the answer is. That's what the Speedway guy told me, so he must be right. But anyway, that other old preacher told him, he says, he said, if you were stabbed in the back and you had 30 seconds to live, I'd tell you, good luck. Now, can you imagine? But anyway, number two, here's another one. Here's another great highly trained theologian. Elisha moved the axe head with the branch into the shallow water and the man picked it up. Now, wait a minute. I have a big problem with that because now you're just totally changing the word of God because it said... Let me see where it said. Verse 6, where did it fall in? The prophet pointed to the place. Elisha cut a stick, threw it, threw it into the water. Now, I could, all right, I guess throw and cast or poke around. <laughs> it's not really what throw means. If I throw it, I'm going to throw it. You know what I mean? And the axe head, what did it do? Floated. Now, I've read this out of the King James, New King James, New American Standard, Amplified, and the CEV, and every version says it Floated. Didn't say it was dragged. That's like down Mr. Rice. I used to live with him and his family a lot just to stay out of my own house. And he had a, a ponds. He had a bait, bait shop. And he had five ponds. And he'd go out and he'd sane the ponds, they call it. They'd have a big sane. You remember that from Mississippi? they throw them out there and we'd get out there and sane, them, sane those ponds, you know. And I, you know, I could see where this old boy saying, well, you know, he just kind of got in there and he, he saned it. He, he brought her to the side. But you see, now... You've just totally disregarded the Word of God. Didn't say nothing about it got drugged to the side. Didn't say anything about it got retrieved. It said it floated. Looked it up in the Hebrew. The Hebrew word that is used in the original Hebrew for the word floated means rose to the surface or it, 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 it um, let's see, exhibited, not experienced, rose to the surface, something that rose to the surface such as a ship or it, it had the... Um, well, I just thought of the word and I lost it. <laughs> what was it? Exhibited buoyancy. Hmm. Well, there you go. So if you guys wonder where I stand, I stand that some iron floated, praise God, all right? I just kind of want to go ahead and clear that up. You're like, well, which one of them you believe? Neither. <laughs> Number three. Oh, I love this one. I, if I had a dollar... For every time that a pastor or a preacher or a theologian or a Bible scholar just went this easy way out, he said this, this is just a legend. It's a fairy tale. Meant to promote Elisha to his admirers and to the disciples of Elisha. Well, isn't that something? They just, they just made this up. 
stuck this right in the middle of the word of God just a big fat lie was what it was Jan that's what they think it was now how would you like to sit under that preaching where all of a sudden now you got a cafeteria Bible Ken <laughs> you know it's like going to MCL Miss Pat say well I, I like that I'm gonna keep that oh I don't I don't know that looks like that broccoli salad I don't want any of that I'm gonna put that over here I, Oh, got that pecan pie that Miss Rita and them auctioned away. Ooh, I'll take a whole page of that pecan chocolate cheesecake pie right here. You know, no, you cannot do that because you got to go back to where we started. All Scripture, all Scripture. Guy spent three days in the belly of a whale. Three guys went into a fiery furnace, came out with not even the smell of smoke on him. Derek, you've been in fires with, you know, I worked on a fire service. It's hard to go into a burning place, come out without smelling like smoke. It's impossible. Even after you take all your bunker gear, I ruined my mama's car like that one time in Mississippi. I was on the old volley department down there. We had a house that just kept going back and kept going back. And we kept getting, well, somebody was setting it. I think that's what was happening. Some old boy down there sitting back there with his billy goat and had nothing better to do. But anyway, I mean, we were out all night on this thing. And I'll tell you what, you go in, you go and you work it, and you take your stuff off, and you drive home in your personal POV, they call it your personal car. My mama got in her car to go to work Monday morning. She said, You've been smoking? I said, well, in not so many words, Mom. I mean, you know, I mean, not in so many words. And I'll tell you, we traded that car, John, and you could still smell. You've been burning. You know what I'm talking about. But yet, God's Word said they came out and did not have the smell of smoke. Which was why? Because God, as those three men stepped into that, burn, that burning thing, I'll tell you, God just reached up there and he took down his Holy Ghost Reynolds wrap and he just wrapped them up real good. And I'm telling you, kept them safe and sound, unwrapped them as they walked out. So this is just a legend. Now, that just, boy, that just takes the cake right there. You don't... This old boy, Steve, he didn't even think about this. You know, he probably had a 3 o'clock tea time. And it was, you know, not tea, not like high tea, but like, you know, what they say we preachers do. And I don't. Angela does. But anyway, <laughs> he probably had a, five, a 3 o'clock Friday afternoon tea time. And he's like, well, I don't know what to say. I'm just going to say it's just a made-up story and be done with my message, you know. But I thought, what? You didn't even put any thought. At least the old boy that poked around, he kind of had an imagination. Uh, the, the one that said he moved it to the thing, he just didn't know how to read. And this, but this old boy just, I don't know, bless his heart. But anyway, so let me tell you some lessons. So are there lessons? Yes, thank you for asking. So let me, and I believe that there's more. See, even with the talking donkey last week, donkey, even with the talking donkey, uh, I still believe that we only scratched the surface of that. I mean, I believe there's more to that than that God will use anything or anyone to comfort us, to correct us, to show his care. You know, I believe God could give us insight. Next week, I could preach on that and be another whole meaning because that's just the unfathomable riches of God's grace as exemplified in his word. But, but for the season, this is what I saw that I believe through study and through the, the leading of the Holy Spirit that we can find today that's going to help us in 2023. Lesson, so you could call this lessons from a floating axe head. How about that? Number one, here's one of the things. We learn about opportunity by this floating axe head. You see, the borrower of the axe saw an obstacle. Oh, it was borrowed. Maybe, well, I ain't got the money, or, you know, it wasn't, uh, uh, you know what I mean, uh, widespread enough they could go get the, what, you know, I don't know. He didn't think about going and get another one because his reputation was on the line because that was a big deal it was a borrowed axe head you know if it had been his axe head he might not have even been worried about it but it was borrowed and so he saw this obstacle because now he can't take this back to his friend or to his neighbor or to his family wherever he borrowed this thing from i don't know where he got it from doesn't matter because he wanted to bring it back but if he doesn't bring it back, his reputation's on the line, possibly his ministry's on the line. I mean, there's just a lot of things uh, of who people, what people would think about him, even though it was an accident. But you see, here's what I believe God wants us to do. When he saw, when the borrower saw an obstacle, Elisha saw an opportunity. He saw an opportunity for God to shine. He saw an opportunity for God to show himself strong because that's in the scriptures too. said God wants to show himself strong on behalf of his 
people. You realize that all the strength the, uh, in our Bible school that we have, uh, we're taking summer off right now, but one of the words, big words we use, the omnipotency, the all-powerfulness of God, God really doesn't need that for himself. He's done everything. He's got a heaven. He's got a throne room. He's got all the worlds created. He's got the whole world in his hands. He's got it all. Well, you're, we're singing that. I thought you'd want to rehearse that, though, right? Okay, we're just working on it, just getting it ready. So, but, so what's he want to use all this strength for, all this might to show himself strong on behalf of his people? So Elisha, now, you, now a little quick thing about Elisha. He's come out from under the ministry of Elijah. And Elijah, now Elijah was a, a little bit harsher than Elisha. Elijah was like a boy, this is the way it's going to be. Elisha had a little bit more grace and mercy about his ministry. But yet, Elisha wanted to see uh, double in his life what he had seen in his predecessor's life, Elijah. And God allowed him to do that. So when others saw an obstacle, faith sees an opportunity. God can take the obstacles, church, in our life, and he can transform them into opportunities for his greatness. Whatever that might be, whatever it seems the obstacle is at the time, whether it's buying buildings and remodeling buildings, whether it's growing up in a, in a 12, 13 step daddy home in the cornfields, or well, not cornfields, they have it, red dirt roads of Mississippi. I mean, God, what we see as obstacles, God sees as opportunities. And if we will get our seer connected up with what God sees, then those obstacles become opportunities. God will take an obstacle in our life and he'll transform them into opportunities for his greatness. Listen, he can take a stumbling block and turn it into a stepping stone. I've seen that in my life so many times. What seemed like I was going to be at a disadvantage, God actually used that to give me the advantage. What it seemed like was going to cause me to stumble, I actually used it to step up. Um, God can take trouble that we might be going through and lead us into a place of triumph. We can learn about opportunity through this. You've all heard the story about the farmer. I know you have because I've told it and other preachers you've listened to had it where then, you know, his donkey donkey there's the donkey again phil that don't his mule his donkey fell off in a pit and he was too heavy to get up and he's like well I, I don't know what to do i can't get him out of here it's just me so he said i don't want him to starve to death so i'm just going to bury him alive and and the, now i don't think this is a true story Joni. it's just an allegorical that we like to use as pastors metaphorically speaking yeah it's it's, it's a fairy tale like the old boy thought elijah's story was but anyway and and the preacher i mean the old preacher no, he might have been a preacher who knows you know but anyway the old boy, he just starts throwing dirt in that donkey, and that donkey just starts shaking that dirt off. And then the dirt gets a little higher, so the donkey steps up on the dirt, and then the guy keeps throwing the dirt in. The donkey shakes it off and steps up, and pretty soon he just stepped right out of the hole. You see, what this old boy thought was an obstacle, that donkey saw it as an opportunity to get out of here and live again. So we see a lesson here. We learn about opportunities. When we are facing obstacles, when we face something that just seems insurmountable, here's how Jesus told us to do it in Mark chapter 11. He says, speak, Mark eleven twenty three. have faith in God, whosoever will speak unto this mountain. Now, a mountain can be an obstacle, can't it? I remember when I was traveling, I went out and did a, a bunch of Fourth of, or some Fourth of July week things out in Wyoming. And it was funny because you think that you're, I mean, you know, you look on the map and there was Sheridan, Wyoming, and there was Lander, Wyoming. And it didn't seem like it was that far away. But they didn't tell you, you have to kind of go around a mountain to get there. And what I thought was going to be an hour took me four hours to get there. But it was pretty good because the pastor who was uh, kind of promoting the whole thing that flew me into Lander's and was taking care of, you know, kind of all the logistics of it, he let me drive his caddy. Christy. Ooh, I was something else. I was driving. I was driving through Wyoming on a Saturday with my window down, driving in a big old white Cadillac. Not a pink Cadillac, but a white Cadillac. Not a pink Cadillac. He, he wasn't selling Mary Kay. But anyway, <laughs> so, 
But here's what Jesus said. If you see a mountain, if you see something that seems like an obstacle, speak to that mountain. Speak what? Speak God's promise. Speak God's ability. Speak the word that you know belongs to you, whether it be for your healing, whether it be for your, your direction in life, whether it be whatever it is, and allow God. He said then that mountain will be lifted up and it'll be cast into the sea. Well, that's strange, isn't it? Who ever heard of that? Well, God has. So we learn of opportunity. When I read this, of this uh, iron axe head floating, and it did float, I learn about opportunity. Number two, I learned something else that's very, very, very important when we are living a life of faith. We learn about obedience. You see, because there were only three people at the time uh, that, that, that had the, the presence of the Holy Spirit. Now, all of us as believers, we all are temples of the Holy Spirit. We're all anointed of the Holy Spirit. We're all led by the Holy Spirit. But back then, it was only prophets, priests, and kings. But the prophet, Elisha, certainly had the anointing of God. He got double the anointing that Elijah had. And we don't know how the whole, you know, inside story went about this. But he got direction from God. Now, there's a hundred ways he that God could have had him go over there and have that axe head float uh, think about some of the things that that um, uh, Moses did he got to the Red Sea took that rod Charlton Heston it man lifted it up pfft, there they went you know just all no spoke the rod just lift it up and what God do things I mean there was a lot of things Jesus loaned the weight saw the blind man pfft, spit in his eye you know if any of you have any eye issues see me after service I I got the care for you I'll take care of it real quick not really. I, you got to know that's God's got to tell you to do that. But you see, but here's what I'm telling you. So Elisha seizes an opportunity. Okay, now God, how? So what do you want to do, God? This is not. It's an opportunity, God, for you to, to to show up and show off and really shine. How are we going to do this, God? God just probably just prompt. No, you know what? The big voice from heaven. Just that knowing inside. Go over and cut a branch and just. Maybe you got a, you know, we used to call it a seeing and knowing. You kind of see it in your heart. You just know, and you just kind of walk it out. Or just in that, in your heart, you just know, this is what I'm going to do. Like Miss Karen and I were talking before service. You know, we, other than a, a prompting of God, when we started Christ Church on September 9th, there was never, there wasn't any significance for us. Now, she told me that was her parents' anniversary, September 9th. But for me and Angela back 13 years ago, a lot of church planners said, start it first of the year. Started on the first Sunday of January. I thought, boy, we live in Indiana. Are you nuts? Probably worked for Dallas. He was in Dallas. Well, that probably worked great in Dallas January 1st because you ain't going to have no, you know, you ain't got a chance of, you know, 100 degree or 100 below in, you know, like we do in Indiana here. You only got probably 100 degree. Then other people said start on Easter. I thought, that's a bad I ain't starting nothing like that on Easter. But, you know, just in our hearts, just as we prayed about it, we just, September 9th, that was the day. There was no particular rhyme or reason in the natural other than that was when God told us to, to start the church. Well, so Elijah, though, gets this prompting in his heart, but now it's up to Elijah to decide what he's going to do with it. He's got some prompting about it. He's got a knowing in his heart. He's got a thus saith the Lord. He's got some direction from God Almighty, but he's got the opportunity to do it or not do it. And see, that's where we begin to miss out on some of the strange things God wants us to do because God's there. He's ready, willing, and able, but then we think, well, that seems kind of weird. I don't think I'm going to do that today. Uh, Tell you what, go get that men net. I'm going to try to, let me see if I can't cast that thing out there. Which one of you swim real good? Let's see if you can swim down there and get that thing. I mean, we begin to try to come up with this. But if you'll just be still and know that God is God, God will give you some direction. I mean, I, know, I just believe right now that we could stop and just start having testimonies about times where many of you faced obstacles. Might have been in your business, could have been in your life, could have been with, you know, a decision you were making. And I mean, you had thought and you had pondered and you had meditated, you'd done all this stuff, and just all of a sudden you wake up one morning or you're driving down the road. For me, it's in the, well, I'm in the shower, Debbie. I'm just, you know, <laughs> hitting the Jay. <laughs> Jay's laughing. Because I'll, I'll get in the car and I'll say, Jay, I had a great idea in the shower today. I want to share it with you. He's like, now let's talk about this before you share too much, Morris. 
But, you know, for me, because I, I've, slow, I've slowed down for a little bit, you know, I've got music playing. It's finally, okay, I've got him, I, you know, God's thinking I've got him in one spot here for a few minutes, you know. I'm gonna, let, let's talk a little bit. But so you get this, and, and, you know, sometimes you can't wait to, like, get ready for the day so you can get out there and get moving on what God dropped in your heart. Well, Isaiah 119 says, If you are willing and obedient, you will eat the good of the land. Jesus was obedient, and now he's sitting at the right hand of God the Father. Ruth was obedient, and she got married to Boaz, who was an honorable and a, good, uh, and a God-fearing man. Noah, these are just a few that I thought of, and I won't give you the scriptures. Uh, they, they might be up there. They might not. Never mind. Noah obeyed God, and he and his family were saved through the flood. So what I saw here was through Elisha's obedience, just like these, through their obedience, they not only got blessed themselves, but they played key roles in the purpose of God. Elisha was part of the solution because of his obedience, and today God wants to work in the earth and will use you and I to do so. Remember, if he used a talking donkey, he can use me. Sometimes that, you know, we should put that on a t-shirt. God can use a talking donkey. Use me. Uh, you know, last week I kept, I kept leaning toward, I kept using the New King James version of donkey, 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 you know. But the King James, now, it called the donkey something else. But I just didn't have the cooth to say that from the pulpit. And originally I wanted to call it, Chris, I wanted to call it, uh, Michael, my la sermon last week, have you ever talked to an okay but miss may i knew that if i did angela would raise her hand and said yep every day every day every day i do and i was not gonna give her that open door michael not gonna do it not gonna do it so we just talked about the donkey last week all right so we learn about opportunity in this Acts head flow. We learn about obedience, but here's the thing, because it all culminates with this, because it is an opportunity, but if we got something missing, it ain't an opportunity. It is about our obedience, but our obedience has to be prompted, and then we learn about divine operation. We learn, listen, church, that God is concerned for a simple need. You know, you look at this in the, in the light of the whole redemption story, and you're like, well, what's the big deal about an axe head? But again, if you do a little bit of reading and a little bit of historical research, not talking about read other people's sermons, because that's terrible sometimes. Anyway, but you know, just read the history, because that's what I did. I'm like, you know, in the Hebrew, why, what's the big deal about this axe head? Why don't you just go down there to Mr. Dom's and buy another one? I mean, you know what? He's got plenty down there. He'll let you put it on account if you have to. So, I mean, what's the big deal? But it was his reputation. It was he'd give his word, I'll bring your axe head back. Well, it's an accident. Well, it didn't matter. He had borrowed that. It was surety. His name was his surety. His name was, you know, he had, it was like he had written a contract, but it was a verbal. It was like a handshake agreement. So this was the thing. But, see, it concerned him, this worker, this prophet, this preacher, so it concerned God. God is concerned about the things that we face. Years ago, I was in a, in a, in a quartet. I, I played guitar in a group, and there was a, I was a rhythm, but there was a great guitar player. His name was Albert, and he played like Chet Atkins style. I mean, he was a picker of pickers, buddy. Well, our drummer, uh, I still, he drives tour buses now. Our drummer, he, he was young then, but now, he, like me, he's old. But anyway, and he drives charter and tour buses, and so we text back and forth. But I remember when Robin, funny thing, his name's Robin Williams, but when Robin was first get, he was the youngest one in the group and um when robin was getting his car one night uh he came to rehearsal and he said y'all i've been you know i've been working i've been working at this dairy farm i've been saving up money says do you think it'd be wrong for me to pray about what car to buy i said i don't want to be greedy i, I don't want to like ask for something i shouldn't ask for you know he's young he's like 15 16 he said is it all right if i pray and ask god to lead me to the right car because i don't want to waste my money on a clunker but i want to get the right deal Mr. Albert, he was the oldest one in the group. He, I don't know how old he was, but, you know, we were like 17, so he looked 90 to us. But I'm sure he's like 45. Who knows? You know, when you're like 15, everybody looks like 83 to you. But anyway, uh, 
Albert just sitting over there with his thumb pick and his PBT 60 getting ready to lay down some hot licks he said Robbie he called him Robbie because people in Mississippi can't speak straight can we you know we you know my Ima was Imer <laughs> and uh, so uh, anyway he said Robbie he said brother he said that's what brother he said we ain't only just gonna pray about what car to buy we're gonna ask God to show you where to park it just to keep it safe <laughs> So what was Albert telling Robin? He said, God is concerned even about the simplest need. In other words, folks, listen to this. If it, if it bothers you, God's interested in it. Here's what the scripture says. 1 Peter 5, 7. Casting all your care upon him, for he cares for you. How powerful is that? Now, aren't you glad we don't try to explain silly stuff away? Well, that's just legend because Peter's just trying to get a good hallmark from his congregation. He's just trying to make pastor of the year. <laughs> you know, I mean, that's silly stuff. No, God said, cast all my care, all my care upon him for he cares for me. The problems, the small details, the insignificant matters we can present to him. Here's something I thought of. Isaiah 66, 1 says, the heaven is God's throne I mean think of, think of the majesty the heaven the heaven is God's throne and the earth is his footstool that's how big God is and Miss Pat your axe head is important to him whatever your axe head is it matters to God that little insignificant that everybody else is like what is the big deal well might not be big to you but it's it's it matters to me well if it matters to you it matters to God but then not only did I see uh, you know that God's concern for a simple need but God's power for a simple need that God you can expect God to do something to help you meet that need I couldn't help but start kind of looking up also about miraculous and strange things and and here's one of the things that 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 so many great pastors agreed upon and I like their definition that a miracle is simply God's intervention in the natural order of things God's not suspending something he's not breaking the laws of natural law or whatever he's not changing but he is intervening at that moment now listen we've never had another axe head incident like this now certainly in our day and age of mechanisms and all that we've got big you know iron ships that sail they've, they've learned all the physics and stuff which came from god that he taught them gave them knowledge to do that but you know we don't just go out and just throw a stick out here and you know hadley pond and axe heads just beep, 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 you know come popping up all over you know because it, it's not really meeting a, a, a need to bring god glory but here's the thing when you have a need Matter not what the natural order of things will be. Well, Alicia, this has got to happen, and this has got to happen. Well, Pat, you know, you broke your foot. It's going to take you six years to heal. Well, you know, Quinn, bless your heart. You know, no, Alan, well, it's just, this is just the way it is. No, God will intervene in the midst of natural order of things to all of a sudden reports that you shouldn't have had for six months, if maybe a year, you're getting them within six weeks. Well, here's how God tells us. Philippians chapter 4, verse 6. Don't worry. Be happy. No, it doesn't say that. That wasn't him said that. That was that other guy said that. Don't worry about anything, but pray about everything. I believe that's what Elisha did as he was walking over there. All right, Lord, now what are we going to do? Well, this is another fine mess we've gotten ourselves into. So now what are we going to do, God? This is, an, this is not optional. It's an opportunity. Don't worry, pray about everything. With thankful hearts, offer up your prayer and request to God. So you have a matter. Here's what Paul says, do with it. Then, right then, because you've made your request be made unto God. When that man said, oh, I've lost my axe head. That's like saying, Lord, I need help. Then, because you belong to Christ Jesus, God will bless you with peace that no one can completely understand. And this peace will control the way you think and just get ready because God can and if need be he may meet that need in a miraculous a marvelous or even a mundane way but God will be God so let me leave you with this scripture I, I, I used this at the, at the close last week and I want to use it maybe over the next couple of weeks as well Luke chapter 5 verse 26 people have been watching Jesus walking about doing good healing all that was oppressed the devil doing everything that he that he did in those days and here's what they said they were all amazed and they glorified God and were filled with fear saying 
we have seen strange things today. Folks, when we see obstacles as opportunities, when we step out in simple obedience, and when we allow God to operate as only God can, you'll see some strange and marvelous things in Jesus' name. Father, today we're so thankful for the words you've given us. Thankful that we serve a God of the miraculous, of the marvelous, and yes, even of the mundane. Sometimes you're, Father, just in that still, small voice. Other times you're in axe heads floating and donkeys talking and people being fed, multitudes being fed with a little boy's lunch. Now, for some, that may just seem so elementary and so rudimentary and so fairy taleish, but for those of us who have experienced it in life, whether it's two NICU children growing up strong and, and accomplishing things that they should have never accomplished, whether it's seeing you take ministries that should have never succeeded and continue to allow us to touch people's lives, what, whatever the case may be, God, We've watched you do marvelous and wonderful things. And we will continue to share that news with all who will listen. Father, today there may be some here who are ready to enter in a relationship with a God just like that. May today be their day. Where they lay, away, lay aside all doubt, all thoughts of tradition, all denominational uh, whatever directives that they've had instilled within them. And they'll, their eyes will just be open and they'll see a God who loves them, who simply would move heaven and earth because... You, you're because of one of his children and lord today maybe that person's ready to say i want to be one of those children i want to be connected to a father god like that and if that's you that i'm praying about i'm just going to invite you whether in this building or online just to pray this prayer dear heavenly father today on the 11th of june 2023 by faith I enter into a relationship with God through His Son, Jesus Christ. I don't deserve it. I can't earn it. But I need it. And you're willing to give that to me. So right now, Father, I receive the free gift of salvation. And now I declare that I'm one of yours and you, are, are, and you belong to me as my Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, who all is waiting for their axe head to start floating? Amen. <laughs> all right, Miss Angela, next week, get ready. Bald men and bears are coming your way. I have a feeling we're going to see a lot of caps in that service that day. <laughs> You want mine? <laughs> no, don't. <laughs> okay, so we are needing some donations. Uh, Miss Shirley is in, you know, we have a craft fair. The women's, uh, the women's group has a craft fair every fall. And so the women get together, they do some things, and, um, and then they have this craft fair. So one of the things that they need donations for, for the craft fair, is blue jeans. They don't necessarily need the blue jeans. They need the pockets off of the blue jeans. So Miss Shirley must be doing something with those. So if you have any old blue jeans that uh, you don't want, you just want to get rid of, please bring them. And um, I don't. you can just leave them on the platform, and uh, we'll get them. And uh, so she can do her craft. I don't sew, and I imagine it has something to do with sewing. <laughs> so um, I can't wait to see it. That's going to be neat. Um, the other thing I'd like to announce is that we are in need of uh, some volunteers to work in the nursery. You know, uh, we have attrition. People ha go through things. They need to take a break or you know, take some time off, and um, so we have got such a big nursery right now. Um, they are, uh, they're amazing, you know. Uh, if you ever want to do something for the Lord, 
and you don't feel like you have the ability to teach and things, you can serve in the nursery and they don't care if you can't teach they don't care <laughs> you know <laughs> just you know just talk to them and share your love that God's given you with them and um, feed them they love to be fed and uh, play and sing and those kind of things and um, you know uh, you are imparting the love of God into some child's life and um, so if you uh, feel like you would like to volunteer, please let me know. And um, we, our goal is to just have a volunteer just once a month. And um, it's easy peasy. They're great. They're great kids down there. And uh, you want to feel younger, get around some kids. Because <laughs> they will make you feel young. <laughs> All right, so the last thing of our church wrap-up is just um, our giving. There are five ways to give uh, here, and um, you can always mail your gift. If um, Some people still do that, and you can mail it to Christ Church P.O. Box 894, Plainfield, Indiana, 46168. You can always text your gift to 84321. You can give in person We if you're here. Uh, in person, you can give in person. We have three tithe and offering boxes, one in that foyer, this foyer, and one up here in front. You can use the church app, or you can give online through the Christ Church um, website. Uh, giving in the church has changed huge, hugely. You know, used to when I was a kid, they passed a plate, played a song, you know, and it went went through, and um, now we give in different ways. And so um, I just want to thank you for that, because sometimes it's, it's a, to me, it's a little harder than just pulling out your pocketbook and giving, you know, $5. No, you got to get online. You got to do all these things to make sure that you give, you know, and um, it just takes a little more effort, I feel. And... Um, and I thank you for that, because that is uh, the way, that, that's probably, when we first started our church, um, giving and the offering and things, that uh, sustained the church, and now it's just, it's moved. It's really interesting to see the progress of time and the church and, the, and people, and, and now most money comes through um, digitally, you know? It's interesting. Anyway, um, we love you guys. Thank you for being here. Hope you have a good day, and hope uh, your yard gets some of this wonderful uh, rain today. I know mine needed it. So let me pray for you before you leave. Lord, I just pray for everyone that is here with us, Lord, and those that can't be with us, God. They're with us in spirit. And, Lord, I just pray for them that you would just keep them safe this week. Just... Um, Help them to remember the word that their pastor has preached today and uh, think on your word. And Lord, I just, I do, I pray for their safety and their mental wellness and their physical wellness. And in the name of Jesus, we thank you for those things. Amen.